go with another cool video. I'm going to install this 8 inch SCAR and this is the SDR8 right in the back of my 2011 Jeep Wrangler. That's got the stock Infinity in there. I already did my ohm meter test. I'm running a 2 ohm speaker in there. 2 ohms easier to push. That's why it's hit so hard. This will get my stock speaker out and this kind of just measures whatever I got to do. Alright, I already started the process of removing this stock Infinity. Uh, you're going to use a Torx and you're going to get all these bolts out. I already pulled these out. Now, the cover and the speaker are both connected in once. So you're only going to do that once. Everything's coming out. So I just put like my little in here and just pop, pull. Speaker's out. You should have two connectors in there. Easy to pop out. Pop that out. Rotate that over. Pop that out. There you go. This speaker's free. That's the difference you're going to get right there. That's how tall it is compared to the scar. And let's see exactly how tall this thing is. Hold that a little better. All right, that runs about four inches tall. And your scar is about five inches tall. So your scar is about five. And your stock's about four. So as you can see, there's a gap. Just trying to put the scar in there, there's a gap. Probably about a good inch. Like I said, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, an adapter so I can get this scar to sit in there. Because like I said, you got to get this thing airtight and it's not going to screw in like that. There's about an inch worth of play in there. Like I was saying earlier, you know, this is a, the stock is a 2 ohm speaker. So I had to get a 2 ohm. So as you can see, I got 2 ohm. That's a little ohm right there. 350 watts RMS. So this thing is going to kind of be easy to power up at 350 RMS, especially if I hook the stock amp up to it first I'm gonna try that but I got a 200 watt kicker amp I'm gonna run to it also and you probably wonder why I don't run a, a amp bigger than that I really don't want a bunch of sound like that I'm not gonna blow this thing up I'm just gonna have a little fun with it so I just so happen to have a piece of uh, compressed board here and this is about quarter inch I'm thinking oh uh, it's three eighths this is the size of it right here it's three eighths of an inch so I think I'm gonna use two of those so what I'm gonna do is cut my adapter out and then trace it and recut it out again. I'll probably just use a jigsaw to make it real quick. It doesn't have to be super clean, but you got to get something to raise this thing up. I'm going to try to get it flush with this because right now this scar is hitting back in here. It's hitting there, so it's not going to fit just straight in there. You got to do something to get this thing to fit. First thing I'm going to do is do my measurements. So it's just at nine inches just a little bit above my nine inches or below nine inches so i'm going to cut it probably about eight and 15 sixteenths maybe i'm going to make this thing a nice tight fit so it doesn't rattle at all so i did my actual measurements and i compared them to this stock piece here so that little dot those are my measurements there and there so as you can see it's a bit wider probably by about um an eighth to a quarter of an inch wider so what I'm going to do is just trace this. Once I trace this little piece here, the little uh, screen, I'm going to actually cut on the outside to kind of give myself some leeway. I'll cut my filler hole in a second. Okay, so I traced my screen and I put my speaker, the new speaker, to scar around it just to make sure. So as you can see the line, so it does fit within there pretty well, which tells me exactly where I got to cut. So I'm probably going to have to cut about an inch in for my um, hole, my actual speaker hole where I'm gonna drop it down in there. So I'm gonna, from this line to here is gonna be about an inch so I can drop it down in there. And this line here is actually, I'm gonna cut it out here a little bit because I wanna actually fill that cavity up there as much as I can. So let's see what I do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my drill and I'm gonna drill, here's my dot here where I'm, I'm gonna start my line around here. I'm gonna drill to the outside of it because I wanna cut off too much not just add it. I'm going to probably drill my hole out here somewhere so I can actually cut around it. And if I have to shave down, then I'll kind of sand it down a little bit. I'm using my little jigsaw here. This thing will get down. That's going to actually cut my circle. So let's see what I can do. And there we go. That's my perfectly round piece right there. There it is. Using that jigsaw. And it almost fits like maybe, I mean, like an eighth of an inch bigger than that. So if you just trace the old frame that goes around that uh, stock speaker, I mean, probably about an eighth of an inch, not even an eighth. It'll it'll work. You can even probably cut it like exact because so there it is sitting inside of there like that. So it sits in there and it's flush all the way around the edges. So when I drill my holes and everything, this is going to come out perfect.
This is how I'm going to drill my holes. I'm going to get me a Phillips screwdriver. I turn my stock screen upside down on my piece. So once you turn it upside down on your piece like that, kind of center it as best as you can. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in each hole and make your puncture. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to drill through the puncture. Then I'm going to stick it on here, screw it in just for fitment. Once that's good, then I'm going to cut out my center. So now that I got my little pilot holes done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this sitting right on top of this, right on the edge. Because I'm going to drill all the way through because I'm actually making my second one as I'm drilling this one. I'll go back through and cut the second board out because I want to make this thing two of these deep. Because that's about the amount of space I need. Or you can just go get one board and make them that big. I'm going to do two because I'm going to see how one fits. Then I'm going to go back and see how the second one fits. There we go. There's my first one. Here's my second one. As I had this one sitting on here, I went on ahead and just drew my line around where I'm going to cut. And so, like I said, I already got the second one ready to go if I need more than one. So I did my measurements on my scar. And from here to here is about seven and a quarter. You know, seven and a quarter is where the actual lip of this speaker is going to sit. So I measured seven and a quarter from here to here to see how close I can get. Found out that each one of these coming inside is only three quarters. So your dot needs to be three quarters inside. So you can go all the way around and put a dot three quarters of the way in. That's three quarters right there where my dot's sitting. So I can do that all the way around and draw me a circle and then... Like I said, I already cut a hole in the middle, so I'm going to stick my jigsaw through that hole, and I'm going to cut all the way out until I hit that, and then I'm going to drill around, and then my speaker should drop right down in there. And there's my line. would have been so much easier with a protractor, because pretty much what I did is I just kind of put this three quarters out, I set my pin on it, kind of pressed my leg, and I just kind of drug it around, and just made sure that as I was dragging it around with the pin resting on there, that my line so I had to keep adjusting and switching like this keep doing like this but just make sure that it's at least close it don't have to be perfect because you can always sand it down just make sure you don't cut off too much I'd rather not cut off a lot and sand down than cut off too much and be stuck redoing this thing all over again there we go sits almost perfectly on the back of my scar so I mean I got enough lip on this thing so it'll you know be able to sit in there it'll raise it up enough so the back of this magnet's not touching way back here so now I'm going to put it inside and fit it in there and see what I can do. Basically, it's going to look like this. And it's going to keep pushing it out further and further. Like I said, I might put another one out here, but I want to see how the first one fits. That's my first one right there. And these holes all match the holes that are already inside of your Jeep. So you'll be bolting this to the Jeep. That's what you'll screw to the Jeep. You'll screw your actual speaker to this here. Well, to the next one, if I have to put the next one in, but that's what you'll be screwing your speaker into. And you want to always start pilot holes because you don't want this stuff to split. So give you some good pilot holes wide enough to be able to get these in there. So once those go in there, like I said, they won't split the wood. OK, I did my fitment test with one and I got I mean, it's a small gap back there. So I'm going to make my second one and then I'm going to be done. I just wanted to make sure that I needed two and not just one. Now, since I'm connecting these two pieces instead of using one, I'm going to have to drill this. Well, these screws, the stock screws, are going to have to go through two pieces. But since you can see it barely makes it through two, I'm going to countersink this thing so it's flush. Because right now, it's not flush. That's how much it is. How you countersink something is you take a bit that's bigger than the head of this, since that's bigger than the head of that. And I'm going to lightly drill into this so it's going to be flush. I don't want to take out too much of this wood because you take out too much of the wood, you lose the integrity. But you take out just enough so that, that uh, the top of that screw is going to be flush with the wood. This is how I'll do it. And this is what you use to countersink. 5 sixteenths. This is a 3 eighths. I can't find my 5 sixteenths, but if I had a 5 sixteenths, I'd rather use it. So go grab yourself one of these. There you go countersunk so you can barely see the heads of those that one can probably be done a little bit more i can kind of see the head but they're down in there so this will sit flush and this will go actually against the back of that so that'll go against the back of the speaker through the first one i made so it'll give me enough space and clearance to get that speaker in there i believe this is the trick let's try it put one through as a test and it's countersunk in there and that's how much bite i'm gonna have into the frame of this speaker right there that's how much bite i'm gonna got so that's a more than enough bite to hold this in place and then i'll actually drill holes around here to fit that speaker in here and that's way more right there that's i like it 
I'm painting them black right now, by the way. So let me go over here and paint this other one black. Let it dry. I always treat my wood. I want to keep it like as you know moisture proof as possible. So I treated it with a gloss black. I'll probably put a couple of more coats on it before I put it all together. But just doing fitment right now. Now these are your leads for your speakers. Instead of splicing these, what you can do is because I already upgraded my six by fives up my sound bar. I kept the old ones. These are the exact same clips. Take these off with the wires. Keep the wires because these are the wires you're going to use to splice to be able to run into here. So what you're going to do is have a plug and play system by using your old 6x5s. And once you clip them, you can keep these if you want to. I'll probably just dump them because I don't need them for parts anymore. Get these clips off pretty clean off this thing here. You'll see, get you a, like a little picker or something. There's a small piece in there. All you do is pull this outwards like this. You put it down in there and pull that little piece out here. And this thing slides straight up. This will slide straight up. Then get you some snips. Stick snips all the way in there. All the way to the base of those wires. Snip those wires off so you can get as much as you can. There you go. What these are going to do is now these two wires are going to go inside of here like this. They're going to fit right down in there. And they now become plug and play for your Jeep Wrangler. That quick. There you go. My plug and play adapters right here. These came off my six by fives and that's in there pretty tight. I can actually drag the speaker with it. That's not coming out. So that's kind of how you create plug and play adapters using old speakers. If you don't want to start cutting and splicing them to your Jeep, I want to leave all of this stuff as stock as I can. So I'm using all the spare parts I can to make sure I keep my Jeep looking as stock as possible. Now for the screws that I'm going to use, I actually get this scar into the wood to the new bracket I built these screws here they're actually exterior screws they're eight one and one fourth inch because what it is I use these to build my deck in the back so I know that they're you know weatherproof and everything and if I'm gonna have the back of this Jeep off I'm gonna need some screws that are already prepped for weatherproof so these are coated screws they're little gray screws and they just pop right in there and I'm gonna have them all around and put them in there here's my pieces of drying right here almost ready almost okay so my adapters in there now this camera's out of focus there we go the adapters in there the stock bolts are actually holding it all in place and now I just gotta drill my pilot holes in with this little thin bit here all right I had to do a quick mod as I was fitting the speaker in it's hard time because these adapters right here they're not you know wide enough they're not enough to fit through here so I had to go grab some speaker wire use some heat shrink and that gives me enough to kind of sit this here as I slide it in. I didn't do the other side. The other side I can just hook directly to it how I have it. But this, I knew I was going to have to add some wire at some point. I only had to do one side. I'm not doing both. This is going to bump, I'm telling you. That's loud. That bass is hitting. Oh, <laughs> 